Good morning, everyone. Today is October 19, 2021, and we are broadcasting live from Los Angeles, California. So where is everyone from? Please type into the chat room where you are watching today's webinar. That's great. Thank you. My name is Donna Chow, your MC from eLotus, and I would like to welcome you to today's webinar by a very popular speaker, Rick Bernard, on the topic of palmistry, the sixth branch of Chinese medicine, part one. Today's webinar will run from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. We'll have breaks today, and Rick will let you know when those are. Lecture notes will be available for download on the course access page, so you can go back there to download a set of notes. The chat room. If you'll be participating in the chat, please set your chat to everyone or all panelists and attendees. That way everyone can be part of the conversation. The quiz and the video replay will be available tomorrow afternoon and I will send an email out to everyone when that is ready as well. So when we first met Rick Bernard, he taught in an electroacupuncture webinar with us. And he is also an author of orthopedic electroacupuncture and a recognized expert in the field of acupuncture orthopedics. I will include the link for his electroacupuncture class in the chat room in a bit. He has over 25 years of clinical experience and has seen over 65,000 patients for Kaiser Permanente's chronic pain and occupational medicine clinics, as well as having a booming private practice. When we first had our TCM palm diagnosis class, and don't worry, I'll put the link for you in the chat room. He reached out to us and let us know that he actually also specializes in medical palmistry. We are very excited to invite him to present today's class. And the reason why he's giving today's class is that he hopes that palm reading would regain its rightful place as a helpful diagnostic tool for modern acupuncturists. Rick will present theory and basis for hand reading essentials that you may use to broaden the depth of diagnosis. Okay, let's get started with today's webinar and welcome Rick Bernard. And Rick, you can go ahead and share your screen now and share your PowerPoint. Hello, are we there? Everybody there? Hello? Hey, Rick. Okay, we see you. You made it. Looking good. Okay, go ahead. Sorry about that. I think we're I think we're set up here. Okay, great. Well, thanks for joining me, everybody. It's been a while since I taught. I'm really looking forward to this class, probably as much as any class that I've taught before. It's, it's, a, it's an unusual topic for many people, but it's kind of reminds me of when I taught for a class in electroacupuncture. I had all this new information, I thought, and a lot of uh, the information around electroacupuncture was really mis was misleading and mistaught, and, and the literature is very poor about it. And the same thing really holds for palmistry. So I'm gonna to hope to demystify it a bit and, and really give you a foundation, and some fundamentals on how to use um, this, this science. Uh, it's really what it is. It's an empirical science, much, much like Chinese medicine. And uh, be able to use it any, any way you like, actually. Some, you can do it with friends and family. You can do it at, uh, you can be a star at a health fair, uh, which is actually kind of how I started testing a lot of the information that I learned. Um, or you can use it, and you can use it with patients, and, and to help with your your just getting a a a, a good perspective on, on where a person's coming from, really get a feel for what's going on with them. Because many times treating physically physical symptoms is not enough. We need to kind of look a little bit deeper and see what's going on with people, what makes people tick, what kind of issues they have, uh, what their strengths are, weaknesses are. Um, just everything about them that you that take you normally six months to learn, you can learn in about 30 seconds by just taking a, a, a little look at their palm. And it really fits really well with what we do as you're taking pulse, you can do, and so what I did when I took their pulse, I looked at their, their hand. And if anything jumped out at me, I would talk about it. And, uh, and patients really enjoyed it actually. 
And it actually gives you some uh, credibility because you can you can tell what's going on with a person just by observing what's going on on with them just by looking at their bodies. Their I have a long really history of, really of well studying do, uh, body pulses. reading systems. And so what um, I did when I took their pulse. Hand, analysis, hand analysis is what it's called now. Is I've studied for over 20 years. I had a man, Richard Unger, who is my mentor, and um, who looked at my hand for 30 seconds and told me all about myself and it blew me away. And you really know the truth when it really uh, touches you. It, it really resonated with me. And I um, studied other systems as well. I studied um, um, iridology. There's a, there's a technique of iridology called the Rayed system, which actually um, is a behavioral type of, of iridology. It's not just looking at physical stuff. It's looking at their behavioral traits and issues. So um, fascinating stuff. There's a lot of body reading systems you can we can explore. You know, obviously, we use a tongue. Um, it's it's a topographical map for us to to use. Um, reflexology, obviously, uh, ear, uh, ear, ear uh, regular therapy. So a lot of different systems to explore. The hands I found probably reveal as much as anything, and you can get more information from the hands probably than any other system, uh, certainly psychologically. So I think you're going to really in, enjoy the information you find. Um, as I mentioned, it depends on where you study, what, what books you read and how you learn this. I learned from a, a brilliant man, probably the best hand reader in the world. And I really tested this, um, this information. I saw over 70, 75,000 people in 30 years, I actually retired recently. So all I do, all I plan on doing now is just teaching. And I've taught a lot of, obviously I've taught a lot about physical, um, treating the physical body. Now I wanna treat more the, the mental part. And so we have a, the, the, the full yin and yang, the full, uh, component of, of treating the mind as well as the, as the body. Um, yeah, so um, let's let's go ahead and move. We'll just do a really brief history and get through as, as much as we can. Um, I made this two parts because I didn't know since this is the first time I'm teaching it, I'm not sure how long it was gonna take me to get through this information. There's a lot more. And so I put in a part two. And if we don't get through to all of today, we'll just go ahead and start off from that point on uh, in, in the second section, uh, part that I do. And, and I think it's going to be scheduled for March or so. So, um, so let's just get started and work our way through it. Uh, as you know, we use, the, they didn't have stethoscope, they didn't have microscopes, they didn't have imaging they can do years ago. Or, or, um, we learned to read the body. Obviously, the, the, things, the two things we use most are, are obviously is... Um, is the tongue and then the radial pulse. Um, they also diagnosed, we also looked at eyes, uh, the condition of the skin, the color of the skin. And we did, they used to look at the hands a lot too. That somehow that fell out of favor of palmistry and they stopped using, I think because a lot of the information was, was not as accurate as it can be. Like any science or, or art, it, it evolves and, and it, Palmistry has really evolved over years and it's gotten better and better. And Western palmists have actually really made great strides and really, really fine tuning uh, palmistry and, and what, what kind of information you can, you can get from it. So I'm gonna blend in mm, Western palmistry as well and, and use a lot of it because we're really focusing more on, on the mind in this class than on physical symptoms. Physical symptoms I found it, uh, diagnosing through the, through the palm are a little bit tricky. And I wouldn't depend on that for just alone, I mean, you, you want to corroborate with, with other, other things, other methods of, of diagnosing. So, um, so I want to really focus more on the mental aspect of, of reading the hands of behavioral traits and personality traits. It's issue oriented, it's finding what kind of issues a person has too. It, it, they all show in the hand. It's, a, it's, an, it's an incredible tool actually we can use. Uh, where did it start? It start? We believe it started in India and was brought to China by Buddhist That's missionary monks. In the hands of behavioral um, traits and personality it really, traits. Like I said, it really fell out of favor over the last it's probably probably 30 years. Of the too. medical it, it system has really it's, uh, caught on to it and have done a lot of studies, um, especially with fingerprint patterns. And we're not going to talk about fingerprints. They call it dramatic lifflex. It's a study of skin ridges in the, in the, in the fingertips. Um, it's a little bit more esoteric study, but it's an amazing study. This, uh, my mentor wrote a book, um, it's called Life Prints, if anybody wants to explore it. And it, it, gets, it gets pretty heavy. Uh, it's, it's not so much personality, it's, it's more um, 
what a person's mission is, what they're here for. It's, it kind of gives you a little bit more meaning to your life. It's amazing. It's an amazing book. So if you have a chance, you would pick it up. It's, uh, uh, it's a great read. As I, as I mentioned, it is a window into the human condition and it gives us a lot of information on what's going on with a person, what makes people tick. Okay, so unlike tongue diagnosis, obviously tongue diagnosis is more concerned with physical uh, symptoms, where to look in the body to treat. Uh, we're interested more in a behavioral approach to, to treating people and helping people. Okay, obviously to, to get insight into the body, examine the mind. Um, a man named Stephen Hall, who wrote a book called Mapping the, the Next Millennium, uh, states that um, every major shift in human history has been preceded by a map. Uh, Leif Erikson sailed uh, uh, to America and he didn't, he didn't return with a map and nothing really happened. Columbus sailed to America, came back with a map and, and the rest is history. So maps are very important and, um, and uh, every system really has a map that's, that's really had the test of the, uh, the test of time. So um, I'm gonna show you the map and help you decode the map of the hand. Okay, so um, like I said, there's a lot of myths about the hand. Uh, some people um, try to predict future events through the hand. Um, uh, you have the gypsy, gypsy fortune tellers. We're not, ish, we're not interested in that. Uh, we're interested more in the here and now and what's happened in the past as well. Okay, we, it's just really is an issue oriented type of palmistry. And, it, and uh, so I'm not gonna tell you, you're gonna meet tall, dark and handsome uh, the next year or uh, get married and have three children uh, within the next two years. So we're gonna, we're gonna deal with really current issues with people and really learn about what, what makes them tick. Also, I like to say it doesn't predict life expectancy. Okay, um, uh, it does tell about a, one's physical vitality and we'll, we'll talk about the, the lifeline, you'll, you'll learn it from that, but it won't tell you that a person's gonna live, a, how many years they're gonna live. There are plenty of people that have short uh, lifelines and live long lives and people that have long uh, lifelines and live short lives. So you, it's, it's, it's very inaccurate. Body, as you know, it's a body, body is a hologram. Uh, the part contains the whole. Uh, these maps are called homunculi or homunculus, little men. Uh, I think the first exposure I got to was uh, I had an acupuncturist on, I think actually was on my first visit, brilliant acupuncturist in, in the Berkeley. And he looked in my ear and he started talking to me about my health and asked me about my knee surgery on my left knee. And I went back to him many years later. I said, well, how did you know I had had knee surgery in my left knee? And he showed me, told me about this little marking that shows up in the, the area that corresponds to the knee. And that really kind of piqued my interest that somebody could tell me what was going on in my body just by looking uh, at a small part of my body. And I think that's what really started my fascination with body reading systems. I'm gonna use a metaphor. Uh, uh, of a garden, so a hand, a hand is like a, is like a garden, and a palm is kind of the soil. It's you have to kind of dig down deep to find out what's going on, one's inner reality, and our fingers are like the trees in the garden. It's what we kind of show to the world. Um, it's what's easily easily seen. Now we're going to talk about the palm. We're going to talk about the lines. Is what most people think about when they think about palmistry, but we also want to talk about shapes in the hands and. Uh, 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 so we're going to do, uh, we're going to actually start with that. And because uh, you can, re it, the shape of the hand really reveals a lot about the uh, personality. You can get a whole um, uh, synopsis of a person just by looking at the, at the uh, shape of a person's hand. We'll talk about the four types in just a minute. Um, so there are, there are a couple of rules, I guess we should talk about. Well, I got one is, um, uh, the bigger something is, the, the really difficult rule. So the bigger something is, the more of that feature a person has, okay? The longer it is, the more time we spend there. So if you see a long line, a person spends a lot of, lot of time. Say, well, it's a headline, for example. If the headline is very long, a person spends more time in their head. If they have a short uh, headline, they spend little time in the head, they make quick decisions. Um, 
so those are a couple general rules. Um, vertical lines in the hand, I'm not talking about, there's three lines that come that we're born with, the head, life, and heart line. I'm talking about all the other lines, because those, those are lines we generate uh, from our life experiences. In general, uh, lines that run vertically are this type of energy, are good lines, they're roots to the trees, they're roots that, that, uh, that show energy uh, available to the trees. Uh, lines that run horizontally are this kind of energy. They're usually obstacles, they're blocks, they're issues that we have in our life. So we're, gonna, we're not gonna talk too much about the issues today. We'll probably do a little bit more of that uh, in part two. Um, so I really want you to get a good foundation. You really need a good foundation in the fundamentals before we, we get into the heavier stuff. Okay. Um, uh, anatomy of a line, a line should be deep. Uh, no blemishes on it, no, no little, uh, I'll show you what it looks, what blemishes look like, different types of markings that can impede the flow of, of energy along that line. Um, lines are like rivers, really. And you see if you get a rock in the middle of a river, a stream that it'll block the flow of that stream, right? Same thing with lines in our hands. Uh, any kind of uh, chain, they come chains or uh, broken lines, they're all, all going to affect the flow of, of energy along that line and, and represent some type of a problem. So. Okay, so let's talk about um, shapes in the hand. So there are four basic shapes, and those are earth, air, fire, and water. And then they give a silhouette of one's personality and constitution. We don't really think about that when we think about reading hands, and but it's a very valuable part. And in fact, it's a study in, it, in and of itself, it's called chorognomy. And um, so let's, let's start with that. Okay, so this is what an earth hand looks like. It's, you can notice it's very square, very square looking. Usually um, a, pure, a pure earth hand will have uh, very few lines. And those are people, that, um, well, let's talk about their, their immune system first. Those are the strongest constitution people. They tend to uh, not get sick very much. They have very good, very good constitution. Um, but when they do get sick, they get to catch the flu or cold, they get sick, uh, it's very strong symptoms. And that's actually a good sign. That means the person has abundant chi and their abundant chi raises to fight the pathogen. So, so don't look at that as a bad thing. That's actually a good thing. It just means the person's got a very strong immune system. Now, earth types are very um, dependable. They wanna keep things simple. If you notice in that hand, there's very few lines, okay? Earth people like things very simple. They, they, they like the earth, uh, they like to use their hands. Uh, they're dependable, um, reliable. Um, they like to do things for others. Um, yeah, that's about it. Let's move on. And as I, as I go through these palms, I'm gonna point out some things that you probably won't, we won't encounter until later, but they're good to know. You just get to see what they kind of look like. So again, just notice on this hand, pure earth hand, there's, there's just very few lines. There's, um, let's see if I can, uh, I can't get my pointer to work here. Okay. okay. Again, uh, earth hand, traditional, solid, stable, down to earth people, practical, hardworking. They like an orderly life. They don't like things messy. They don't like to get caught up in a lot of emotional stuff. Okay. Okay, so you notice the shape, how different this shape is than the earth hand. This is a much more box shape, more rectangular shape. So it's really, it's an earth hand that's, that's elongated, okay. And in earth hands, or, or uh, air hands rather, you can see that um, there's some lines that tend to be a little bit longer. They tend to have uh, more lines. It's just actually this, this particular line doesn't, it's not really clear, but they tend to have more lines. And I'll show, I'll show you some more examples uh, in the future here. Um, they spend a lot of time in their head. They're the thinkers. They're always trying to learn something. They're the pet perpetual student. I'm actually, I don't know if you can see very well, I'm actually um, have a lot of air in my hand. It's 
very rectangular shape. It's like it's just an elongated box. So it's a, it's a um, earth hand that actually just has elongated itself a bit. And some so it's a classic uh, uh, David Letterman hand shape. Uh, what's fun about learning the hands? Uh, another thing you can just if you watch TV at all, you can watch people and see how they move and how they use their hands. You can kind of look at the shapes of the hands, how they hold their hands, the posture. And we're going to talk about a little bit about posture uh, a little bit later. But it tells a lot about the, about the person, even just looking on, seeing somebody on TV and looking at the shape of their hands and what they do with them. It's a mental type personality. They things they like to think things through at different uh, different perspectives. They believe in justice. They believe in fairness in life. And their main problem is overthinking. They tend to think, think, think. Okay, so they tend to have more uh, long headlines. They spend a lot of time in their head. Even their heart lines tend to be longer. They think, think, think about the way they feel, feel, feel. So um, very common for air people to have, have um, more lines and the lines tend to be a little bit longer. Curious, inquisitive mind, eternal student, perpetual student. Um, yeah, they just have a quest for knowledge, always learning them. That's like, I, I I'm always learning something new. I'm always fascinated by something. I'm always reading a book or doing something. So um, I'm not sure that's a good thing or not, but now this is a really uh, unusual shaped hand. This is, the, this is the fire hand. And this is a classic fire hand. There are different types of fire hands, but this is classic. Notice how the palm is very elongated and the fingers are very short. Now people have uh, some types of hands, the fingers are very long. You're gonna see a, a, a water hand here in a second and uh, air hands, are, the fingers tend to be longer. Short fingers like this, people tend to be really quick. They think really quick. They don't, have a, they don't spend as much time in their head. And fire people, if you look at the, the uh, condition of the lines, it's like if somebody took a whip and created these lines. There's a lot of fire people have a very, uh, Quite, uh, quite a few lines, much more than any other type. They have a lot going on in their life. They're very passionate. Um, they're always doing something. The, their problem sometimes is completion because they're starting so many different projects or involved in so many different things. It's uh, focus is, can be a, can an issue for fire people, but they are very passionate, uh, tend to be the life of the party many times, depends on the, on the heart line, how curvy it is. We'll talk about heart lines shortly. Um, yeah, but you can have a fire hand also if you don't have this regular shape. Sometimes a fire hand uh, uh, will show up on an earth hand. You'll have the earth shape, but you'll have lines that look like this, very sharp, very whip-like, okay? And that'll just add a, a different uh, character to the personality. Fire, uh, one thing, uh, what, the hardest thing to learn in palmistry is combination, combining different traits together. and. Um, like a fire and a water have, a, or fire and air, or fire and earth, they all have different traits. Um, we'll try and touch on that maybe part two, that's a little bit more advanced stuff, but then it really gets, it really gets fun. Again, an unusual uh, hand shape, energetic, creative, individualistic, they're very individualistic. They like to do their own thing. Um, and it's susceptible to burnout because they have so many irons in the fire. Okay, they need adventure, they need excitement. Um, they don't like to sit around and do nothing. Okay, and this is the water hand. You can see how much more delicate it looks. Again, fingers are long. Uh, it's a thinner hand, a more gentle hand, um, more delicate hand. The lines are usually even look delicate. They look very soft and gentle and thin. Okay, sometimes they can have they can have. Um, Sorry, I'm seeing if I can move the pointer, which I can't. Sometimes they have these little horizontal lines uh, above the heart line, uh, which in this case is the top horizontal line in the hand, that is the heart line. And sometimes they'll have little lines, they're called girdles above that line. And those are lines of sensitivity because the water hand is the most sensitive of all the hand shapes. Okay, they're very, they're much, they're more emotional, um, aesthetic, uh, but they're caring, they're sensitive. Um, yeah, they can be a little bit thin skinned at times. And that's only, it's if you see the, a lot of the girdles, these horizontal lines above the heart line, it's as if the heart line couldn't contain all of the emotion. So extra lines were created uh, above it. 
Okay, again, delicate small hands. They tend to have more, more uh, lines because they they're very sensitive. They think about things a lot, so they tend to have a little bit more activity in their hands. It is the weakest constitution of the four types, a little bit more susceptible to illness. Uh, don't recover quite as quick, certainly not as quick as, uh, as the earth hand does. Okay, and those girdles, interestingly, those girdles that you see above the heart line, the horizontal lines, um, they're actually, they're many times are sensitive to the environment as well. So um, not just like sensitive to criticism or not thin skin, it means they're actually sensitive to the environment. So they tend to have a lot of allergy issues. Very interesting. So before we get into, I guess, a little bit more detail on these lines, let's, uh, let's just take a five minute break. I'm gonna get a, a sip of water. 